Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for staying here with us. Uh, we already know that just the day everyone had a party, so, and it's too early. But anyway, thank you a lot. Uh, well, welcome to our keynote. Actually, today we are going to talk about uh, many things. We would like to thank the whole EPIC team to, uh, for bringing us here and um, to have the opportunity to share this time with you. Well, this is all very first time in USA, actually, and we would like to uh, just say thank you. <laughs> anyway, uh, we will speak about various aspects and projects, obviously based in our experience. And But anyway, uh, first thing first, we have uh, the amazing luck to have been working during this year with a lot of different companies and with partners and you're going to see a part of the result that we have been doing. So we are going to start with what we are going to talk today. Well, we will show you several projects that we have been working this year with Unreal Engine. So there is a way to put a smile on faces of the filmmakers. But we, we, have, uh, we are happy to give you some background of who we are, what we have been doing, and an overview of the projects that we have been working on. We will also talk about the film engine, the process in the industry that we use every day to make workflows better and easier. And we will talk about gamification and how to use the power of Unreal Engine for the specific creation of tools that can help directors to get them more comfortable and with the hands on the wheel. By another part, we, we are going to talk about design and designing cinematic workflows, creating and using a specific tools for the rest of the team during a project with the purpose to make things easier. Also, we will demonstrate and discuss about two different examples that we have been working on. Very first one is a project, a Barbie project actually, before MetaHuman Things, and a full, a full guys live action trailer that we have been working on. As you know, every single project has its own risks, complexities and necessities. So we are going to talk a bit more in depth about that kind of necessities in these two examples in particular. We will also get a little insight into cross-platform IPs and how to save money with planning. This is the plan of the chat, okay? So as we mentioned before, we are going to start with a fresh beginning, who we are. Well, the thing is, Raised by Monsters is a super young company. It's a super young company. We created this company a year ago. Actually, right now, it's like a birthday of the company. <laughs> but, uh, well, and the thing is, both three of us wanted to create something different, unique, and with soul. Some, something vibrant. So uh, at the very beginning, we were working in our houses during pandemic and developing different kind of workflows with a lot of different companies and friends to work with more and more with Unreal and try to blend our industries. We, we have a VFX background and a video game background, so we wanted to create something unique with a big mix of tools trying to blend both worlds. Well, we, we are based in Spain, actually in Madrid, in the center of Spain. That means tax incentives, <laughs> okay? But anyway, uh, there is a really good place to work. We have really nice food. It's sunny. Well, you know. <laughs> well, and well, the thing is, we actually, as I mentioned before, uh, both three of us, we created the company. Right now, we are more than 25, actually. So that's pretty cool. And working in the studio every day in different departments based in Unreal, based in FX based in coding and quite a lot of different departments to try to put effort every single day in create, as I mentioned before, something unique. Okay, the thing is this year was complex for everyone. But in our case, we have been working in more than 18 different projects with different categories, with different status, and well, <laughs> was so crazy. <laughs> And let me show you a small sneak peek talk of what we have been doing.
<laughs> okay, so well, we are going to talk about what we are, why we are here. <laughs> well, it's time to start a film engine. What Unreal Five does for Hollywood. Well, the thing is, as you know, right now, Unreal Engine is covering a lot of different spaces and parcels inside of the industries, a lot of industries. But uh, in this case, we are going to talk about how Unreal help us to get directors smiling. So the thing is, we have three different areas where we are using Unreal Engine right now. Actually, that areas are pre-production, that means well, spaces, previs, and quite a lot of different stuff production and post-production such as, for example, PostBase or Final Pixel. The core idea using Unreal for this is to try to help and find a different way to do the things, to get as much as we can. Uh, and as you know, every single day, the amazing Epic team is putting more effort and giving us more tools and more tools and more tools to try to develop as much as we can and try to break that line that is connecting the offline regular system with the new RT systems. So we will cover every single area just like a sneak peek right now and we will explain how and why we are using it. Well, actually, uh, Previs, as you know, we want to block it like uh, something that we really like it. We we are so focused in Previs with Unreal. I think that from the version 4.17 or something like that, because it's the perfect tool to mix animations with cameras and do it everything super fast with final lighting. With it's not like the common blocking system. It's more like in depth and more visual. You can sell more products with it and that kind of stuff. That you already know. In this case, we use Unreal for the scene assembling, cameras, and measurement of the spaces to tell to the teams if they can put the right camera rigs onto the right spaces. Really good way to create floor plans and move everything around and have our, an original idea of how the shooting is going to be. Uh, well. So the thing is, previous means pre-production, and in a film, is the first step. Well, actually, this is like a super small schema of our previous workflow. Of course, that is, <laughs> this is super small. But anyway, uh, the thing is, uh, someone, some client, some friend come, comes with an idea, and uh, they call us. And after that, we start to think about the full process, not only into the previous part. We are thinking about if the assets are going to be reusable, if we should put effort in doing final stuff, or it's only with the previous purposes, and all of that kind of things that are going to make the production cheaper and easier for everyone. As you know, the main objective of the previous is to try to put the ideas of the small part of the creative team in the beginning, onto the rest of the team during the world production. So the thing is, if three people create an IP, we need to think about that at the end, probably 300 people is going to work on that. So we should be super smart with that kind of process and blocking things. Well, after thinking about the technical issues that we can have during this process, we obviously delivered the idea to the, to the client. And after that, we start to think about the different tools that we have and the different tools that probably we are going to need a specific for that project. That means virtual cameras, motion capture, gamification. We will talk about gamification because it's super important for our company because, well, you will see. <laughs> and this is like the theoretical thing, but at the end, as you know, everything is mixed up together and there is no <laughs> jump forward. It's backwards, 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 one step forward, and so on. Well, actually, as you know, we have plenty of tools inside of Unreal, like the common current Unreal 5 tools, like level sequencers, take recorders, live links between a lot of different hardware and virtual cameras. For the previous creation, actually, we used to 
create several tools and reuse and others. Previs, previs means development. So Unreal Engine is giving us a huge part of that. Also, of course, you need to code quite a lot of different and custom things, and you need to blueprint, blueprinting, do blueprinting around that, know that tons of that. And that's an amazing statute of things, but when you try to create a different way, you, you need to think about how you can put people that never use it in real inside of a world. And if they do more work, we do less. I mean, if directors can use tools to do the things, we avoid to have more issues. Well, PostWith, PostWith in, in, in all cases, we have been using PostWith to create, for example, I think that was 1,500 shots of PostWith with six oceans for, for an Amazon TV series. We had one week and a half to do that. This is why PostWith is super useful to try to block finally and after the shooting, the final ideas and the creative decisions of what the people needs to see or what's going to be the final edit of the project. And final pixel. Well, actually we have been working, I think, in four, five different final pixel things with, with Unreal. Uh, as you know, it's, it's like a dark water. You have an idea, you try to put everything together and uh, the 95% of the things doesn't work as, as expected. But um, as I was talking about, it's like final pixel with Unreal right now is, is, is it's right, it's true. I mean, it, you, you can do amazing things with a real-time engine, like, like Unreal, and the, the final product is amazing. So now is the moment to try to create as much as we can. Uh, you, you are having just a few steps and all the information is around us. So we, we have the luck to have been working with this at this time and this moment, and I suppose that everyone that is here uh, knows that Unreal is giving us the, the, the main tool to create mixed worlds and quite a lot of different things. Well, I think that's your time, mate. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Okay. <clears throat> uh, what is uh, film gamification? For us, the, my idea is to transfer all the video game development tools to the film industry. How? E equipping filmmakers with interactive tools to carry out the ideas they have, to give them a chance to do exactly that, what they have in their heads. Uh, we know that is hard, and, but we are trying to do that. Today we will talk about tools and procedures that we use more and more. Like by by one by one side, we will talk about the conversion of the gameplay of a video game to elements of the sequencer. This can be used, as Emilio said, in previs or postvis. And on on the other, we will talk about the generation of online tools to improve the experience of the different filming teams that that have no knowledge of Unreal that uh, is a good thing to, to try to help to do easy, easy things for all the people. So we look at the first part of three uh, of a process in which a vehicle is driving and recorded from a game path by a director and then implemented in, in the uh, final level that he wants. So here is the, the example. And we are seeing the airplane blueprint that is only an airplane built from a static mesh and correct pivots to react to react from a gamepad controller. And we have set it the helix rotation, the flap movements, velocity, gravity variables, and all the all the things that uh, do that looks realistic. But easy to play, like in a video game. That is the is the main thing. Uh, here we have 
uh, a lot of functions, but it's all very, very easy. It's not complex because it's only setting variables that you change. It's like uh, when you do a input controller for video games, so all, all of you know. So in this one, we start to see how the director is driving the airplane. And as you can see, all the movement that were set in the blueprints are reacting with the game device. Also, you can look at the printed variables in the screen that we were setting up before only to, to show to the director. And with this system, uh, you can give the ability to animate a physical correct vehicle for a non-unreal user, only playing. So it's, it's easy to use it. And then you can put it wherever you want. That is the, the idea. Uh, record all that you want and move to another level or to another scene or you want. As you saw, the take recording was running and that means that every single property of the airplane is being recorded into a sequencer track, generation, generating a, a batch of movement inside of the track and giving us the capacity to reuse it onto a different uh, environment. And the final step is uh, how we can implement the animation uh, and add the classical email while you are recording, <laughs> but in this case, also applying into, into an, any other level that he wants. So we start importing our vehicle, actor blueprint into the scene. The first step was to put a cube or any other static mesh into a certain position and copy that, the transformation, into our asset only to have the location that we want is uh, like you can see right now. And then we are going to create an additive transformation track so we can use the previous animation but correct it and you have playable movement in your final environment. Here you can see that the rotation is not correct, but it's only to set zero. Okay, zero, zero, zero. And you have the the movement that we recorded with the director playing in the new level. Okay. This is one of the things that the directors uh, say to us that, that they want to to use because it's like uh, he never knows how the environment uh, gonna be so and uh, the another example that we have today is a developed system based in pixel streaming and runtime transformer tool plugin that you have in the marketplace and the thing is that with this server, we want to create a bridge between clients and TDs to reduce time in minimal environment change. With this, we are trying to give in the ability to set the exact amount of change and store them into our servers, but web-based, okay? For this demo, we created a simple interface with minimal elements, as you can see, just to show you the system, but you can add all the actors that you want. In our case, we have lights, uh, characters, cameras, and uh, info point, or uh, is like an icon to to have a location information. The idea with this system is to drag and drop elements, modify them in terms of rotation, location, scale, hide or show them, remove it from the original scene and much more. That means that all of that change that the client is doing through the web browser could be saved into our server. And the next time we will open the original project, everything will be there. Is an amazing tool to work in remote or <laughs> in the pandemic. So uh, it's very easy to use because it's like um, it's like an editor, a normal editor or something like that, but playing in game and in your house with only a web browser. So for us, it's very cool and we are proud to use them, to, to use it, sorry. You can see 
all the things that you can do with that. And finally, you save and all is save in our server. The next uh, example that, that we talk about is Barbie and Mikkel, if you want to. Okay, thank you very much. I think we, we have a hard night yesterday. We didn't even say which our names are. He's Adrian, Emilio, and me is Mikkel. Okay, we are all the owners of Raid by Monsters. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for understanding. Okay, so I'm going to talk about two examples. I mean, probably these were the most important examples for us because this one, Barbie, was the first project we did when we created our company. We were, the, it was the three of us in our houses, in our living rooms, working together like a year ago. I mean, we are celebrating our anniversary here, so it's cool. So our friends from Visual Creatures in, in LA call us, and they have one problem because they were making this Barbie short final pixel thing inside of Unreal, and they wanted to mix the or use the animations that they recorded the motion capture in every character they had in the sequencer. So, what they wanted to do is like to having a character inside of the sequencer with animation and when, whenever they want, change the heads or the bodies between all the different configurations they had. So all of this was before MetaHumans and just they call us to make this possible and these fucking crazy guys that they are like very good at scripting and all the stuff uh, they developed all of this for them so they could like put all the um, all the characters whatever they want. Finally, we we and I we end up like making tons of things because in my case I'm not an unreal guy. I'm a 3D guy and coming from BFX and I like I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean this was my first my first steps into Unreal and was fucking crazy. I learned a lot of things and now. I'm here and a year before. So we made some VFX, we made some uh, effects inside of Houdini and import them into Unreal to, uh, to put them in the sequences in, yeah, in one month. Yeah, it was a month, so yeah, it's, it's, it's always easy for us. Like we tight times, tons of work and many, many hours. So we worked with uh, Visual Creatures teams. We we have a very good time and we learn about a lot of it. So this was the first result. Thank you very much. So it was all final pixel inside of Unreal. We used like RTX technology in it and it was in 4.27, I think. And it was it was a really cool project because it helped us to like to establish a line in our company to work in different projects as this one. Okay, so the same guys that we really love them, but they come to us with different, very di difficult things. And they call us for this project. I mean, they had like a Fall Guys ad for the new season. And what they wanted to do is like, they want to make a commercial, a like footage commercial. But I mean, because I think Fall Guys was going to, to be in Unreal now. They wanted to make all the, uh, the ad in, in Unreal. So we have BFX knowledge as we talk about. So the challenge here was to create a full BFX pipeline inside of Unreal in order to create this. Uh, so in order to, to make the 3D um, mix with the live footage for the comp um, department possible. So we have some things we we need to to work on uh, in this project. Also, I don't know if, if we have something in the read we saw before, but they told us that they wanted real-time crowd for this too. So we have some experience in that also, but in BFX, in our packs, so we also say yes, because we don't know how to say no, apparently. So we end up like spending several weeks uh, trying to develop 
um, some custom render passes that we probably will need, or the not not as the comps, the comp artists, they're gonna need like we have like three mm, important things. Like we need shadow catcher, we need reflection passes, and we need a uh, one important thing that are image planes because. What we need is to see live action footage real time inside of the engine so the layout artist can place the cameras and the characters and all that. So we were working like a few weeks developing with another amazing artist around the world, a, a tool to help those layout artists to create all of these um, scenes and we end up like with, we use Composure tools in of Unreal. We use sequence tools, uh, stencil layers, camera projections, tar render targets, all of these. I mean, we try several things and we had end up making like a really cool um, tool that set all of this for the artist. So you just need to set up the scene and and then just render and you get all of these passes we I talk about. So the other thing we did for this was to make crowd in real time. Uh, we work with Golem, a solution that we previously worked in VFX, and it was a fantastic and amazing trip with many, many bugs, but we finally get it. And I'm, I mean, it really, really works pretty fine. Was actually was super curious because after several tests and when everything was working with physical uh, physicalization and and <laughs> quite a lot of stuff between characters because the last two shots of the of the commercial was having around five hundred different beans and running and jumping and crossing the street and well having fun and that kind of stuff. We discovered one super curious thing and was like crowd does it didn't reflect onto the glasses because our instances coming from like a particle thing and well was another I think that probably for another keynote, right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think like in the reflections you can see all the characters just in once. So that was uh, another stone in our. Uh, yeah, okay. So uh, this was the result. So as you can see, problem solving is our thing. And talking about Unreal 5, like all of these projects we talk about was in 427 because we didn't have like the um, the Unreal 5 yet to to make all of these. And for example, the um, the custom render passes that I talk about, I think we have tools now inside of Unreal 5 to make all of things happen. And so that's cool because Epic is making great things within Real and and helping people like me that is coming from VFX to to come inside this amazing software and make pretty cool things. So we love it. So like for example here you can see some some of the things we made for it. 
And here is our fantastic crowd shots. We also made tons of compositing work, but this that's another story. And close par platform my piece, if you want to talk about. Well, uh, we just want to talk about cross-platform IPs because one another cool thing that we have is with the pre-production uh, smart thinking, you can reuse assets. For example, imagine that you are planning to do a new TV series or something like that that you are going, and you know that you are going to use Unreal for doing that. You can create an asset or all the assets can be reusable in video games for the same IP or another kind of formats. So it's super nice to think about that pre-production right now more than ever is the most important part in the world production thing. Uh, we just want to talk about this because the uses of every single asset can be shared with tons of artists that aren't going to use the same environment tool with the same things that we have been using during the offline common VFX process. But after that, the, the solution is so simple because every single particle system or every single uh, Alembic cache, geometry cache, or uh, another kind of uh, effects that you are doing, you, you, you can use it for everything. In that particular case, even if it's online or offline rendering. And this is the, the, the cool stuff that we think that is happening right now. The, the people is start to thinking about how we can create something that is going to be useful for the rest of the things, but in different ways, not only for making video productions. And I think that is pretty much it. I think that we just want to thank you guys for staying here. Uh, sorry for English because <laughs> we are like robots, I think. And, and that's all. Thank you very much.